Today, we're gonna to go over the entire foreclosure process and the timeline. Let's get to it. All right, guys, before we get into today's video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get notified of our weekly videos. And let's break down the foreclosure timeline because I know it can be super overwhelming and it's really gonna depend, first and foremost, whether you're in a non-judicial or you're in a judicial state. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the different phases, but it's important to understand which one because it's the difference between someone getting foreclosed on in five months or two years. <laughs> and I've seen foreclosures drag out. The most I've ever seen was 14 years to date, right? Because I'm sure someone's gonna surprise us at some point with more than that, but it's absolutely insane. And whenever we do our pre-foreclosure class, we always get the same thing where people are like, I cannot even believe that someone can be more than a year behind, never less 14, but that's another video. So, all right, so let's talk about the difference between the non-judicial and judicial, because we're gonna start there so then we can talk about you know all of the steps. So non-judicial is states like Texas. So Texas, where we're based out of, it's a non-judicial state, so it only takes about five to six months to actually get foreclosed on, okay? So if you do absolutely nothing and you miss all of your payments for five to six months, they could actually sell it at the auction. Now, the main difference between non-judicial and judicial is that the non-judicial, you don't actually have to go through the courts. You don't have to go through a judge. You're not getting going through a lawsuit. So because you're not going through that process, that's why it's super quick. So the first phase is that they miss their first payment you know, within 30 days of them being late. And now the bank is gonna approach them with all the options once they're past that 30 day mark, right? So they could do forbearance, they could just figure out a way to do partial payments. Like there's ton of options within 30 days. Now, these would be great numbers to call, but unfortunately there's no way to track or nothing is recorded at that point for you to contact those sellers. But the next step, when they're 90 to 120 days late, that's when they're considered pre-foreclosure. So that's when you're gonna start seeing the postings because once they get to that point, that's when the notice of default is filed. Okay, so once the notice of default is filed, they have now hired a substitute trustee, which is a foreclosure attorney, and that foreclosure process has started. Now, it does not mean that they've been foreclosed on yet, nor does it mean that they don't have options because they can still sell the house all the way up until that foreclosure date. Okay. At this point of the process between the 90 to 120 days, depending on how aggressive, you know, the bank gets, or if the seller did anything with the bank or anything like that, they do not have a foreclosure date yet. The bank has to file the correct paperwork. They have to, you know, go through that entire process before it goes to auction. And that's the next phase is the auction date is set. So when you're looking at the different leads, when you see the different lead sources, you'll see pre foreclosure and then you'll see auction pre foreclosure closure is what I just explained where they're only the 90, 120 days. And then the auction is where they have an actual sale date that the house is going up for auction. If nothing is done, the house will sell at auction. And if you're an investor and you're looking at these properties, remember that you have no idea what's going on with that house, right? So it is definitely a risk because you're buying a house sight unseen. So in a non-judicial state, it is so informal. In fact, the first auction that I went to, I was shocked. I was thinking that it was gonna be, you know, an attorney with this in a suit that was gonna be like reading off all these addresses. It's not like that at all. Like half the time you can't even tell it's the attorney that's that's saying it and they're so quiet. It's like they don't even want us to know that they're auctioning off the properties. They're like, okay, so uh, legal description, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna start the bid, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's it's. they're literally looking down at their paper and they're just reading the legal description and the bid amount. And so if you are an investor going in, make sure that you understand the risk that you have to pay cash at the auction for the property and that you're accepting the property as is, sight unseen, and any other liens or taxes or anything associated with the property. So when I used to purchase properties at the auction, I would go through and scrub the list. Now understand that a lot of those houses may not stay on the list because if they get pulled, you won't know until you're actually at the auction steps. But if you want me to do another video breaking down how to buy the houses, let me know in the comments and I can do that. After that, at that point, there's a million things that the seller can do up until that auction date, okay? So that's the non-judicial version and it's super quick. In between any of those phases, all the seller has to do is reach out to the lender. All the seller has to do is apply for assistance and it will postpone the sale date. It will postpone the process while it's under review, 
Okay, so that's non-judicial. Now let's talk about judicial. Judicial is a lot more complicated for obvious reasons because you're going through a judge, you're going through the courts. See, there's so many parties involved, especially because it's a legal system. So as soon as a borrower is 30 days behind, same thing, um, the lender will reach out, give them the same options as far as in doing partial payments to catch up or forbearance or any of that. But then once we get to that 90 to 120 days, the lease pendants will lay out all of the terms like the actual date that they need to go for the hearing. And I'll show all the details of the foreclosure from the lender. And now at this point, this is where you have to show up in front of a judge and basically plead your case, right? So if you're a homeowner, the good news is with the judge, you're able to have two adjournments so that you can get this postponed. So you have two chances to be able to get this postponed that they will allow as you're extending it for whatever reason, right? But you have to have a good reason, whether it's I'm trying to do a loan modification or I'm gonna sell it or I'm gonna catch up on my payments or whatever it is. So it's a lot more forgiving as far as time than it is in a non-judicial state. In Texas, the, if you call the foreclosure attorney, they could care less. They're like, no, we're moving forward with the sale date. But when you're in front of a judge, they're a lot more lenient. So they'll give you up to two times to be able to get that postponed, which is why in states like Florida and California and New York, the foreclosures can last for years because then you just have people pleading and getting those adjournments and getting that foreclosure consistently postponed. I had a property that I purchased in Orlando and this seller had, I think it had been like five or six years that they've been playing this game. And the judge was fed up. Like she put it on the market and then she took it down. And then she told them that they were gonna do a loan mod and they took it down. And then, I mean, just a million things. And the judge, we act, ended up, because we show up for the hearings and there's a lot of things that we can do to help with the postponement to make sure we can get it stopped. And I remember I was talking to the judge, it was Zoom, and he was like, I do not believe a word that she says. Like, we're like, we have this under contract, like we're gonna close in two weeks. And he made the buyer put 30% down in escrow, which means that, you know, they, they put earnest money, but it's never 30%, it's usually like 1%. <laughs> and just to prove that the buyer was serious and the title company had to confirm that they had the cash in order for him to agree to postpone it, to allow us to close, like it was wild. But as you know, like you can absolutely work the system. And so when you get to that point, this is why I tell sellers, like you think that you're like playing the game, which you are, but now you're running out of options because no one takes you seriously. So the longer you drag it out, the less options you have because we lose all credibility that, hey, we're gonna sell the house and they know that you're just trying to buy time. So no matter whether you're non-judicial or judicial, it's super important to understand the repercussions of not following through with an agreement, You know, telling the bank or telling the courts that you're gonna do something and not doing it. We have sellers that, and this is why I tell people like if they're gonna refer deals to us, because we get a lot of referrals like two weeks before an auction date. And I tell people all the time, like there's no way for me to tell you what I can do because I don't know what's already been done. So once we start talking to the lender and we find out, oh, this person's eight years behind, they've done six loan modifications, they've filed bankruptcy twice, I don't really have a lot of credibility here to talk to my contacts and say, hey, give us a couple more months because they've already played that game and they don't trust that the seller is actually gonna sign and do what they said they're gonna do. So we always tell that to people. That's why we're like, hey, refer it over to us. If you ever need help stopping a foreclosure or you need help working on a deal, we're always here to help. You can go to our website. I'll put the uh, link in the description of the video, the ssqueen.com. Even if you're just trying to talk about a deal or like need advice, we're happy to help as long within reason. You know, look, I always say things like that, but then I hear the girls on the phone for like an hour and a half. So like, don't respect their time, right? Cause they're so giving. We wanna be able to be a resource, but like, don't take advantage. I definitely wanna say that because it drives me crazy. Anyways, but happy to help. If you wanna reach out, all of our um, contact information is in the description of the video. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments what your biggest takeaway was, and I'll see you guys next time.